you have to understand that SHBG is way more important than people are putting on. And I don't even see TRT doctors talk about it. What is up, everyone? It's Chris. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's is more sip is night. That's on water.com. ASMR Spritz Intelligent Argon. Hear your noises. All right. Today, I'm going to be talking about with any sort of cycle blast, but SARMs in particular, SHBG, the biomarker that nobody really takes a serious note and looks at, is the transporter that moves your hormones around in the body. Sex hormone binding globulin is seen as this like bad biomarker towards certain individuals because if you inject high amounts of bioidentical testosterone, your body uses this as a defense mechanism of, hey, we're too androgenic, anabolic, there's too much inflammation going on, I want to get rid of all this testosterone. What does the brain do? It raises sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin goes and binds it up and renders it useless towards the AR. Meaning if you're injecting 500 tests forever, your sex hundred, meaning if you're injecting like a gram of tests forever, your sex hormone binding glob, your sex hormone binding globulin will go up there and you might only have 300, 400, 500 active test level because that's SHBG is so skyrocketed. So it's like people, when you get your testosterone checked, this is why you get free testosterone and total testosterone because the total testosterone might be through the roof, but the free testosterone that might be messed up. The free testosterone is what you feel. So if you see a high total number and a low free T, you have to look at your SHBG and potentially do methods of lowering it, which the you know medical way to do it would be, in my opinion, provirin therapy would lower it. But that is one of the ways that we waste steroids is not paying attention to our SHBG and or we have tons of problems and think we need TRT when we don't. We just need to get rid of this SHBG level and we can reset and utilize more of our own testosterone because free testosterone is what you feel. Now let's flip it. Let's flip it. Let's go to the other paradigm. So the other paradigm of this shit is that SHBG crash leads to this horrible inflammatory environment where hormones are not getting transported where the brain wants them. Shit is binding randomly to AR wherever it fucking feels like. And SHBG overall cannot bind and render SARMs and hybrid exotic androgens useless. It can't. Sure, it can bind with bioidentical testosterone, render that useless. But as far as trenbolone, any of these things that are completely modified by some guy in a lab, you're not going to have that SHBG as a force to stop the high androgenic anabolic environment. We're gonna need to come off cycle, go on HCG monotherapy, which is gonna raise your own super bioidentical natural testosterone, which is gonna allow the SHBG level to recover. But I see this a lot, Russo, I'm on a blast of trend, a blast of this, a blast of that, like over a gram of gear. And it was going great at the start, now my libido shot. In my opinion, your SHBG's fucked up. There's no transportation going towards the lower level with AR activation. Your libido is going to suffer. You're also gonna be in a pro-inflammatory environment while you're obviously eating shit tons of food causing more inflammation, that's bad. So that's what happens with that. That libido crash right is that shbg goes to zero you feel like dog shit the androgens that you're injecting are just binding randomly with no messages from the brain transporting it around and overall shbg can't bind with sarms it can't bind with trend it can't bind with any of these exogenous exotic androgens that you're injecting or taking orally so you have to get off and recover it and or you have to keep hcg in there to maintain fertility to maintain testicular function as well as to maintain local androgen level at the penis these are all things that are just skipped over when these cycle designs happen and some of these cycle designs are very expensive to where i'm like why is hcg or hmg not even in here 
you have to understand that SHBG is way more important than people are putting on, and I don't even see TRT doctors talk about it. Free and total testosterone and where your SHBG is will determine the amount of testosterone you feel. You want to keep SHBG in range. SHBG in range allows for transportation of hormones around the body the way the brain wants it. When SHBG crashes because you're adding in so much exogenous exotic androgens that your body cannot detect as bioidentical testosterone, SHBG crashes which leads to this pro-inflammatory environment that really starts wrecking havoc if you're adding in tons of food. Could crash your libido as well as overall just make you feel lethargic and inflammatory, right? You feel like crap. That's why certain people feel great on high dosage cycles. They probably have HCG in there though. And some people feel like crap as the cycle goes on. This could be a big problem. I'll look at a guy's blood work on Instagram, at Rooster Lips, follow me there. And they'll be like, yeah, my blood work looks great. I'm ready to go again. You know, I'm reading down. It actually looks pretty good. You know, the liver's in check. He knows how to check the liver. He knows how to check his cholesterol. He knows how to check his kidney values. I get to the SHBG, it's like four. And I'm like, man, dude, you need to go on HCG only, recover the SHBG, keep the HCG in there, and then you're good. Otherwise, the cycle's not gonna do what it's intended to do and your overall like base level stasis of your body is fucked up before you even put the exogenous androgens in there. So please educate the TikTok bodybuilding PD experts about SHBG. I've heard none of them fucking talk about this at all. And this is basic biochem, basic right? I don't claim to be a fucking genius in biochem. I claim to be a mastermind, meaning I need to work at everything. I will be the master of nothing but good at a lot of things. SHBG is one of those things that you need to take into account your entire TRT exogenous androgen career because everything else could look great on paper and that little SHBG number isn't a glaring warning sign that you're in a pro-inflammatory environment with a SHBG crash or that all your testosterone is rendered useless with a too high SHBG score because your body is using that as the defense mechanism to combat the testosterone you're injecting. I'll see you guys in my next video.